Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Sir Slick playing old school RuneScape. Today we're going to take another look at blood runecrafting, this time by running directly to the True Blood altar in Mauritania. It's this altar right behind me. The visuals of this place are absolutely stunning. The developers have done an extremely good job. I mean, look at it. The blood is raining from the sky. It is beautiful. This is a more advanced method with some very high requirements. It is also an extremely profitable way to hunt for the runecrafting pet, especially past 99 runecrafting. Also very well suited for mobile client. I enjoy playing on mobile client a lot, especially after the last few updates. In many situations it is just as good, if not better than the PC. And to tell you the truth, it is quite comfortable to play on a tablet while sitting on a couch watching TV. I have done a guide on running blood runes through the abyss a short while back and it was an excellent money maker. Running directly to the true blood altar is even better, but only if you do it in a very efficient way which has a few relatively high level requirements. No matter how you get to the altar, you're going to need a level 77 runecrafting and since of the father quest completed. Enter the Abyss is not strictly necessary to run directly to the Blood Altar, but it is required if you want to use the runecrafting pouches, so you pretty much have to do it anyway. I would recommend doing the Guardians of the Rift minigame to get the entire Raiment of the Eye outfit to get the extra 60% runes when crafting. Without it, your profits will be much lower. Also, if you do the minigame until you reach 77 runecrafting, you might be able to afford the outfit and likely you're going to get the Abyssal Needle, which can stitch all of your runecrafting pouches into one colossal pouch, making runecrafting in general a lot more efficient. Accessing the altar requires a blood or catalytic tiara, which can be used on the hat of the eye uh, to attune it to the tiara and then acting in its stead. So you'll be able to get to the altar with just a hat. The fastest way to get to the blood altar is a fairy ring teleport code DLS. So you'll need to do the fairy tale quest line, but at this stage of the game most people already have that covered. This means that it will be necessary to have a quick fairy ring teleport. Ideally having a fairy ring teleport in your house and using a construction cape or a stack of house teleports in your inventory. This will allow you to use the rejuvenation pool to recharge run energy and comes at a hefty requirement of at least 80 construction. If you don't have the construction method open, you can use your questing cape teleport and use stamina potions for run energy. If you decide to go with the potions, ring of endurance is going to be quite useful, but that is going to cost almost 40 million GP for the ring and stamina potions to charge it. This will not be necessary if you have a pool in your house. Banking can be done by teleporting with the crafting cape or alternatively by ring of dueling teleports to castle wars. You can have the ring of dueling teleport in your ornate jewelry box in POH, but that again requires 19-1 construction. Uh, using a fast shortcut to the altar also requires 93 agility. And before you use it for the first time, you're going to have to run around and mine the obstacle blocking the shortcut with the pickaxe, which requires 78 mining. The colossal pouch is going to degrade every 8 trips. So you're going to have to carry a rune pouch with runes for NPC contact and contact the dark mage in the abyss and have him repair your runecrafting pouches. To cast NPC contact, you will need a quest Lunar Diplomacy finished and be on a Lunar Spellbook. If you have the runecrafting skill cape, however, your pouch will not degrade and you won't need to call the Dark Mage at all. All of these skill capes, construction, runecrafting, crafting and agility converge very nicely into a max cape, which I myself am very lucky to have and will use it to test this. As I've said, the requirements are quite steep for this method and you might get around with the banking at Castle Wars, uh, quest cape teleportation and NPC contact, but your GP per hour is going to decrease quite a bit. If you cannot use the superior agility shortcut, 
I don't think using this method is worth it at all and you'll be better off crafting blood runes through the abyss like I've shown in my last video. I will now show you the best way to run through the underground tunnel to get to the blood altar. I have marked the way on a map here. Please feel free to pause the video and study it a bit if you need to. We'll start by teleporting into the crafting guild to bank. Okay. We'll take out a bunch of runes. And that's pretty much all we're going to need. Now I'm going to teleport into my house. Use a fairy ring teleport into the underground area in Mauritania. And then there are a few tunnels you have to go through, like this here. Now run down this tunnel, enter the one at the end. And this will put me directly in front of the superior shortcut. This is the one you have to clean first, the first time you use it. So let's enter the cave. And I'm right here at the entrance to the blood altar. And once I arrive here, I just craft my runes. Now teleport back to the crafting guild. Bank. Back to my POH. Now, I didn't lose much run energy at all, but if I need to, I can always recharge it here and go back to crafting. I mean, room crafting. So this is the way to do it. For my one hour test, I am going to be wearing the rune crafting outfit to get the 60% extra runes. And I will use the blood essence to get further 50% runes, uh, extra runes. Uh, the blood essence currently costs about 280,000 GP and provides the profit of about 100k per essence used. I will also be wearing graceful gloves. They will provide a bit of run energy, but that probably won't make any difference for me. In my inventory, I will have the colossal pouch and the blood essence. Nothing else will be necessary for me. I will make do with my magscape for the rest. The abyssal lantern is not going to have any effect here. Neither does the Draman stuff. It's purely for fashion scape. It looks kind of cool. The Draman stuff might be necessary for people who don't have completed elite diaries uh, in Lumbridge. I have that done, so I don't need the Draman stuff anymore. Just for the fun of it, I have mined 10,000 Dailed Essence to get the best XP rates possible. I don't need the extra XP and it isn't going to affect the GP per hour in any way, but it will be interesting to see the results. As I will be not be entering Wilderness, I will not be risking anything. It is always a good idea to flex your pet. You might make a few people jealous, might not, you never know. It's still a nice pet to have around. So I'll see you in an hour. Okay, I am back with the results and they are a bit puzzling. But first I'll explain the absence of HD plugin. I've used it in the first part of the video, but obviously my PC was struggling a bit. Normally I can run at 60 FPS pretty much capped while using HD plugin. However, capturing the video seems to require a bit of a computing power as well. And this is when I encountered some trouble. It all looked okay while I was playing, but the resulting video came out a bit choppy. Uh, so I am going to stick with the regular GPU plugin, at least for the foreseeable future until I uh, upgrade my PC. 
About the rune crafting profits, I had managed to craft uh, 7658 blood runes in one hour, which is not quite as many as I expected. Uh, when I was crafting these through the abyss, I actually managed to exceed the number listed on the wiki, so I had high expectations. Uh, this time, however, I came up quite a bit short. I thought I was doing well, maintaining my focus, trying to do these runs as quickly as possible, but somehow the results just did not reflect it. Maybe I'm just not used to this technique uh, as much as running the abyss, I don't know. Anyway, my 7658 uh, blood runes have sold for, let's see, for almost 2.9 mil, but I'd also spent uh, 1.815 blood essence, costing me a little over half a million GP. Uh, so my actual profit is exactly 2,386,524 GP. I also managed to get 57,000 runecrafting XP using the day old essence, so that's not bad, I guess. Anyway, that's it for today. You guys have a nice evening.